Small-scale farmers are among the poorest and the hungriest in the world. Yet in Africa, agricultural communities make up 65% uh, of Africa's labor force and account for 32% of gross domestic product. Efforts by governments and the developing communi development community at large to support small-scale farming in sub-Saharan Africa are not yielding significant results. Now, for perspective into some alternative ways that could help find lasting solutions to tackle challenges facing Africa's farming communities, I'm joined by Roland Fomdan. He's a social entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Greenhouse Ventures. Welcome to Africa 54, Mr. Fomdan, dear. Yes, you're very right. Thank yes. you for having me. Now, you know, farming is, is a critical sector for the African continent. African nations are literally sustained by small-scale farmers. Right. What are, in, in few words, what are some of the challenges these farmers really have to face every day? Yes, farmers face a number of issues. First of all, production. Having constant production every day, every time, and prices, it's a very big problem. Seasonality also affects farming because, um, because that also affects um, prices and fluctuations. So, for example, in Cameroon, you would have, uh, during the mango season, a 50 kilogram bag of mangoes would cost about four dollars if you if you convert that and during the off season you probably have no mangoes and they even get more expensive um, if one mango of those is sold here in the u.s you would probably sell for about three dollars fifty if it's been processed and dried so it's a very very big challenge because uh, small scale farmers they work the hardest and they're not involved in the value chain of the produce um, and that makes it in such a way that you have farmers who worked uh, grow the food and actually don't have much to eat mm -hmm. or what they get to consume. It's very poor quality. Now you've been working to try and see how you can, you know, sort out some of those issues. Uh, just can you lay out some of the strategies that you think can work across the continent? Yes. Uh, first of all, we had to understand what was the underlying problem in agriculture. First, it's involving um, a population that is very, very active. Today in Africa, you have the older generation that is still involved in farming. And that is because farming is still done the way it was done 500 years ago. Um, youths are totally disengaged from this farming activity. So first of all, we have to find ways to involve more youths in farming so that you can increase productivity. Because the older generation, they're getting tired. They have other things to worry so about. So you want to try and make it, uh, you know, not look like uh, something people do because they have no education, they're poor and they have nothing better to do. Yes, you know, that has actually been a stereotype. In America, if you talk to a farmer, you don't have that stereotype. Yeah. You understand? Um, in Africa, of course, when you talk of someone being a farmer, someone who lives in the village, yeah. they're poor, they illiterate and all of that. And it's been a stereotype that has affected farming for a very, very long time. So what more, because we don't have a lot of time, really can be done to first in, to give the incentive, but also to make it worth their time? their energy yes um, creating structures or infrastructures that can actually involve farmers and actually enabling them to produce year-round and also engaging them in ways they can actually sell at competitive prices mm -hmm. it's very very important now the governments have not succeeded very much in this area how do you come in good uh, um, governments uh, usually um, haven't solved all the problems of several communities uh, where we come in is where we say we have introduced a technology that is novel, a technology that is very sustainable, it is friendly. But more so, our greenhouses have been used to grow more per unit area. We grow uh, more healthier crops and crops that could be sold at a premium on any market. So in such a way, you are engaging farmers in a way that they grow, they also consume what they, um, what they, what, what they produce, and also they can actually sell at competitive prices on any markets globally. So you are enabling them to actually grow throughout the year. That's right. And hopefully mag uh, take advantage of uh, prices when they're of more benefit to them. Very true. Uh, yeah. But more so, we have made in such a way that we are looking to stabilize uh, the prices we have on the market. So mm -hmm. we focus in three main areas, production, um, aggregation, and then post-harvest uh, management, which are the key things that once you can engage these three areas, and then you're actually being able to engage farmers in the value chain of the produce. We really need to appreciate and love our farmers. They feed <laughs> the entire continent. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us and giving us this insight. Thank you. Well, uh, Roland uh, Fum, uh, Fum Dan is a social entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Greenhouse Adventures.